everyone. Welcome back to OMG GOT, a weekly review of Game of Thrones, where me and two guests go over our top five favorite moments of the episode. We just finished watching episode four of season eight of Game of Thrones. My name is Alexis P. Bevels. The P stands for Podrick. I really thought he was going to get some dick tonight. Uh, Wait, Podrick's getting dick now? Yeah. You know, I know what I meant. I know what I meant. Uh, I am here joined by two wonderful, wonderful people. Uh, sitting right next to me is actually someone from my hometown of Redacted. We're not telling you. We Connor certainly Cons. are not. My name is Connor Cons. What's up? Yes, Connor Cons. Now, you are um, relatively new to the franchise. You're catching up. I you haven't seen am. everything. I haven't seen everything. But I you have seen tonight, and that's all that matters. That is, yeah, absolutely. And you're wonderful, so I love you. And sitting to... Their right is the beautiful, the enchanting Auntie Heroin. Hi. Auntie Heroin, how are you? Tell me about your look. Uh, I'm great. Um, so my look, I was like, well, what if Auntie Heroin like did some shit on the wall and then, you know, got killed by the Night King and like, you know, I got raised up, but I'm like working the ranks up to be like that right hand person of the Night King, but he's dead now. Anyways, so this is just yes. kind of like an ode to like, you know, my favorite part of the show is now over, so now I'm like Great. Yeah, absolutely. From ho to crow and then dead, don't you know? I am so glad that you are here. Thank you so much, both of you, for well, being here. And I will here. say that I have been watching this from the beginning. I know all the shit about the books. I know all the things, <gasps> and I am I'm here for it. So You are ready to rumble. I'm ready to go off. Let's, ready to rumble. All right. We're going to start with our five favorite moments, favorite OMG moments of season eight, episode four. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start. I'm going to go ahead and start with my number five favorite moment. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say that my number five was the Winterfell Mixer. Everyone mm -hmm. at Winterfell, mm -hmm. they were doing their drinking games. We had the moment of um, Gendry getting lorded. I'm kind of lumping everything in here. Yeah. Gendry getting lorded, that was a really fun moment. It was a good win for Daenerys. Um, and then later on in that scene, Sansa and the Hound. And there was a moment where I thought, like, Sansa hasn't really had consensual sex yet. Is the Hound going to be her pick? I really was like, is she giving eyes at the Hound? I have been drinking a lot. Connor, what was your number five favorite moment? My number five favorite moment was at the start of the episode where all the bodies were stacked in those beautiful configurations. My number five is body stank. Because Ooh. you know those bodies had to smell really bad. Yes. <laughs> oh, piles of pyres. I loved it. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. If I could organize my room as well as they organize those dead bodies, I'd be a very happy man. <laughs> Whoa. Angie well, Heroin, tell me about it. Well, you know, actually, um, I p picked something very specific from the little mixer. It was when Sansa talked to Clegane. But it wasn't because I thought, you know, you're going to get that dick. I actually, I thought it was a very moving moment where she was just kind of like, like, my favorite character is Sansa. So I just think she's like this really powerful creature that, like, has done everything herself. Everybody else had something to begin with and has, like, worked up or, like, done something but Sansa from the beginning like has had everything against her and she has created herself nobody's created her and I so it's just like anytime she takes some form of like power I'm just like totally gooped about it I, I completely it. agree with you and she's got that big old fat cock ring around her neck it's awesome <laughs> <laughs> That's not wrong. Yeah, that too. this was a this was a hard episode to start with. It was a lot of goodbyes. It was a lot of meaningful moments. Mm -hmm. uh, and I agree with you about Sansa. She's a, she is a force to be reckoned with and a force of her own making. Um, that brings us to number four. I'm going to go ahead and say it was the indecent proposal with uh, the newly lorded Gendry to Arya. Again, I said it in the first episode of OMG GOT. Uh, Game of Thrones loves to give us a moment and then take it away. You give a mouse a muffin and then you say, no, you are gluten free. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Gendry is like, I'm a lord. I'm fun and fancy. Marry me. And she's like, no, bitch. I'm so sorry. I don't like you like that. Uh, but the favorite part of that when she was like, I'll never be a lady. That's not me. She said it in season one. Yep. She said yes, it about she Nymeria last season. Yes. Last season? Yes, last Was season. Was it last season? Yes. Um, that's not me. That's that's a whole that's a whole motif with Arya, who mm -hmm. I love and who I'm dressed like tonight. 
Um, Maisie Williams, you're perfect. Can we be friends? Okay. Right. Uh, Connor. Okay, but the best part of Arya's costume is that it doesn't make any sense. Like, who wears asymmetrical designs in Winterfell? But <laughs> it is cold, right? You need full coverage, not like one boob exposed. I love the design. doesn't make any sense. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, fuck you. I'm okay. <laughs> very warm. I am super warm. And we live in Chicago, so we know what it's like to be super, super cold outside and then go inside when the heaters have been blaring for 10 hours. Sure. I need to take all your layers off. I think she's smart. And actually, I'm going to give a, mis- a shout out to Michelle Clapton, the costumer, who is actually my MVP candidate for tonight. Okay. Connor, tell me about your number four and stop dissing my costume. Okay, I'm so sorry, Michelle Clapton. You're a goddess. Um... My number four is John making Bran tell the family secrets. <laughs> like, I, come on. I just don't feel, I feel like that's such a typical, like, older brother, little brother, and maybe they're not even related, right? Uh, move of like, oh, well, technically, I'm not breaking any promises to anybody else if you have to tell this big secret to somebody else. Um, so I just really like that whole, like, power dynamic there. So that's my number four. You're such an idiot. I fucking love it. <laughs> Um, okay, well, you dumb cunt, like, you take all of my uh, fucking fire. I said, Aria, I'm not a lady, okay? Like, yeah! I said the same damn thing because I'm like, fuck you. Like, okay, you that's should... on my list too, okay? It's just not at number four. No. Oh, oh, more important. Well, we'll now get you're there. giving we'll it away. Get there. We can, no, we can get, we can have same. That's you know the what? beauty of this is we're all watching the show, we're all interpreting it in our own way. Uh, I no, want to know what you're talking about. Okay. Honey, yes. My actually, my number three was Danny and John after the Winterfell Mixer. When she was like, keep it secret, keep it safe. 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 <laughs> Shut up, bitch. <laughs> and I want to say, I want to say, this is my fear with John, is this whole time, it was Ned's downfall. Here, he was doing honor over maybe the smartest decision, and I think John's going to do the same thing. And, I mean, spoiler. By the way, there's spoilers in this web series. I hope you know I was like, that. Wait, do you know spoilers uh, <laughs> that we don't know? <laughs> no, no, no. Um, yeah, she was like, and oh, in the end of that scene, when she was like, yeah, I've already told you how we can live together, how this is going to work. Yeah. That scene was incredible. It was a very important moment. We know John's going to do the right thing, but is the right thing always the best thing? Oh, fuck. Now that I say it out loud. Right, but the lighting in that scene was also really good and just like really hot. Everybody was like looking so orange and sweaty. It was really good. Well, as we know, we're drag queens, candlelight. We, you keep it dark. Yeah. yeah. Candles are luxury items, as we learned about the controversy of last week's episode. Yeah, Connor Cons, what's your number three favorite moment? My number three is uh, Lord Varys staying relevant. He oh. is staying relevant in this scene. He w- in this episode, he will not be outsmarted, as we've seen from the very beginning. He has his hand in every pot and no pot. Um, and he is always plotting and planning, and I really like that at the end of the episode, that he was really just, he continues to pull everybody's strings in ways that we don't stunt expect. Stunt queen, stunt queen, who you, and Lord Varys, who you are mm-hmm. resembling tonight. Yes, yes. I always tend to paint, like, Lord Varys, like, 50 years in the future, right? So, like, um, you know, if you're standing, like, 100 feet away from me, I look like Lord Varys, right? But right now, I kind of look like um, the, what's the guy who, like, lures the people into the old tower in season two? The Pied Piper? No, what no, season two. You know, like the evil wizard? Who's the, the evil wizard in the tower and they try and take the dragons, but then... Oh, oh, um, the House of the Undying. Yes, I look like that guy who, like, multiplies oh. in the House of the Undying, but I'm really... Thank warlock. you. The yes. warlock. Yes. I do apologize, yes. Oh, yeah, that, that guy. Yeah. Fuck I, him. I was thinking of the tower in Winterfell. I'm like, you mean the old ass... What's his name? The guy that... The, the, the old maester who yeah. I think made a cameo in last week's episode. I think he was the one of the first zombies to come out of the crypt. Watch it. Turn up the brightness no, no, on no, your no. screen and I watch it. I saw that it. too. Yes. I agree. I agree. That was him. That was him. I saw that too. You heard it here okay. first, folks. Yeah. All right. Or anti-heroin. Anti-heroin. No. Uh, number three. Tell me about it. My number three um, was Brienne crying after Jamie leaves. Ooh. That was so big. You know, you just like... We've spent what is six years with her now? I think she started in season I think three. Season two. Season yeah, two? she was season two with Renly. Season two, yes, so seven absolutely. years. We've been seven years with her. She has never cracked. She's always just, she's always composed, and she just. And at some point, you know, she started to cry, but then she just let it go. She's like, "This is probably her first time. Like, I guess maybe in love. I, I don't know. Like, anyways, 
I like picking all the really emotional moments that are seven years in the making. Come on. Absolutely. So I thought that was like really powerful. I do want to take a moment and say we are film here and we view the show here at the uh, gorgeous Elixir Studios here at Elixir in Lakeview. They are wonderful. So actually, oh, yeah. we have a live They're studio wonderful. audience tonight. Will you all give a round of applause for yourselves? Yeah. Uh, we had a few chatty Cathy's tonight, but that's because it's uh, Cinco de Mayo and people were drunk. Uh, happy Cinco de Mayo, by the way, to everyone. And uh, speaking of Cinco de Mayo, um, our, our friends to the south, uh, there's one thing that's relevant to this show is that walls don't work. They don't work. Well, they work for a couple thousand nope, years. No, they don't work. And if you build it, if you build it, we will knock it down. Actually, this doesn't actually. It doesn't I will it. knock it down. Yes. I can say it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We'll knock it down. All right. Uh, okay, so we're going to go. Oh, fuck. Are we at number two already? I think we are, yeah. Sorry, I curse, mom. All right, number two. Um, Sorry, mom. Uh, Actually, my number two was your number four. It was John and the family meeting uh, in the Godswood outside of Grandmother Willow. She, John said, uh, hey, we have to bend the knee. And the girls were like, no. And he was like, Ugh. Listen to your heart. And I was like, John, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. And then he did it. But what you said was, uh, Brand, tell them all. So if you notice, let's talk about this. John said, you have to promise you will not tell anyone what I tell you. But then he gets Bran to tell them, creating a loophole, meaning Bran told him, not John. They can so all that tell. way, as we all saw, Sansa, spoiler, tells people, and now everyone's going to know, wait a Fucking go, Johnson. You really don't know anything. I'm actually pissed. I'm going to take a drink. Connor, go. Great. Okay. My number two is, again, at the beginning of the episode, uh, is Brienne looking like a dirty Q-tip? If you look at the early episode, she's wearing a lot of makeup and her hair is still like nice and pristine. But then a couple shots later, it's like they wiped off all of her makeup. Y'all know when you like take the Q-tip out of your ear and you're like, oh, cool, I got a big old chunk on this one, right? That's what she looked like at the beginning of the episode and I was really, really here for it. And I knew that we were going to get a lot of emotional story arc from her being a chunky, dirty Q-tip. <laughs> I don't really know what to do with that, but I appreciate your point of view. <laughs> Anti-heroin. Anti-heroin. We're all dying to know. What's your number two favorite moment? Um, well, I mean, it's hard to follow that. <laughs> um, I said my number two was um, that stupid fucking Daenerys getting her dragons out there to fucking Dragonstone. Bitch, did you send, like, a boat? Like, maybe just, like, a paddle boat around the fucking island? Like, a what the boat. fuck? <laughs> like, one with the, the like, paddles. You see these two dragons just like, ooh, yeah, really spreading their wings fine. It's like, uh, I knew that fucking dragon was gonna get hit by that dick. So yeah, rest in peace. That just Ray pissed Gall. me off. I'm like, come on, you like oh, these are my children. Okay, so you're just gonna take three of them up north of the wall, get one of them killed. Don't give a shit, and then you're just gonna take another one without thinking. You already had one, and she already knew that Drogon got shot in the wing or whatever the fuck by that other scorpion. She knows they exist. She knows the enemy has these things. You think the last six months or two years that you've been fighting this goddamn battle while Cersei's doing her shit, she wouldn't have made a couple more? Dumb bitch. Right. Well, I hate to get political. Get mm. political. No, no, no. We're going to cut this part. Stop. Okay, never mind. Uh, I was going to say something about how, like, we should learn from our past mistakes and maybe, like, if things happen, maybe don't make more guns, make less. You already talked about the wall. Uh, uh, no, I completely agree with you. I completely agree with you. No, don't. Fuck it. Don't cut that. Don't cut it. Gun, gun control Keep now. Uh, gun control, no wall. Uh, yeah, 100%. Uh, I agree with you. Also, was it, yeah, it was Rhaegal, right? It was Rhaegal that died? I don't know. Yeah. Well, Watery whatever grave. one is, I mean, Drogon's alive. That's all we Drogon's know. Drogon's alive. Fuck. Yeah. Viserion's that was the one really that was sad. a white, right? He was the ice dragon. Viserion was the, the he Viserion, wasn't an ice yeah. dragon. Well, he was shooting blue out of his mouth. Yes. Right? He was the Kool-Aid dragon. Shooting UV or whatever. <laughs> all right. Uh, okay. This brings us to our number one. And I, I'm, I'm going to take a, a stab in the dark. I'm going to say that we maybe all have the same one. Maybe not, uh, but I'm going to tell you mine. Mine was well, the very end bitch. of the episode. It was the Wild West showdown. Uh, yeah. We had Cersei up on the wall with poor Missandei, who never did anything to anybody but just be nice. 
And then we had Daenerys over there with her Diane von First Menenberg wrap dress, looking sick. And then, um, and then we had Tyrion coming up to Kyburn, who who would have thought he would have lasted this long? And they had their little showdown, and they were both like, Kyburn's uh, the Night King. He brings people back to life. He's the new Night King. Oh. The old Night King's dead, so he's he's like, well, I'm taking the throne. It's just you know. That none of that's real. I'm just making that up. He's so out. okay, but that. Well, he's the only Maybe necromancer drunk, left alive. Yeah, holy besides shit. Besides people in like a shy in the yeah. Shadowlands, but so that was that was my number one moment. It was a very good cliffhanger. It was a very good like, mm-hmm. again, Game of Thrones. You're so good at making us think we're on top, and then you just delve us right back into the depths of darkness. Evil. I thought we were okay. Then all of a sudden the dragon's Valar gone. Mar- I thought Mal-Gulas. we were maybe okay. Masande's like. And then, oh, and then they did what they did to Ned. They just fucking, spoiler. Yeah. Connor, what do you yeah, say? Spoiler, Ned dies. Okay, so <laughs> perhaps. Uh, oh, well, that's fine. I know <laughs> what it is. Uh, I feel like maybe I have my priorities out of line. But my number one moment from this episode is Arya's, like, pretty much like, yeah, right, from the proposal, which we already fully talked about. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I, just, I, I just thought it was so good that she was like, oh, okay, I see what you're doing, but like... And she made out with him first. Yeah. She was like... She's like, well, let me, let me savor this moment for a second. Well, I wouldn't make out with him. Joe Dempsey, call me. Especially after he got that buzz cut, right? Like, yeah, but his buzz breath cut probably stinks. That blacksmith? His I don't breath. care what his breath smells like. It's not his breath I'm interested in. I feel like all of their breath has to stink. I'm well, not, I'm, yeah. They all smell like shit, and they're covered in, what, dead body goo? Like, who cares? <laughs> Except for Brienne, she got a good wipe down. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right? She got her good, like, moist towelette and gave herself a full wipe down before she got everybody. I, I can't believe none you. of us mentioned, maybe not. Well, we'll see what yours is on your list. None of us mentioned Brienne and Jamie finally doing it. I'll tell you why I didn't, I didn't mention it, because I'm not interested. That's not what I th- where I thought this well, narrative you, was going. Well, you haven't seen all of the seasons. So, <laughs> Auntie, Auntie, go ahead. Number one. Okay, let a true fan speak. Um, let's see. Actually, it was the same as you. It's the build up to Missandei, but like it wasn't so like everything was really good like the um what like Tyrion walking up, all the bullshit. And yeah. honestly, though, I was just like they have all these fucking scorpions pointing. Why don't they just kill the fucking Drogon sitting over there? You know, fucking like, what, what is I he really, doing? I really thought, I really thought he was Cersei there, was going to kill fucking, him. You have like 10 soldiers and then like Daenerys is just like, oh, I'm not going to wear armor. And you she could have gotten killed right there. Yeah. Where's the fucking green fire? Cersei just win already. I'm sick of this. But anyways, um, so the whole build up. Uh, anyways, Daenerys, I'm so sick of the whole good, you know, good versus evil storyline. Like the whole good, they're all idiots. They're idiots. Just burn the fucking city. Idiots versus evil. That's really what we're dealing with right now. It's idiots, idiots versus, versus evil. Yeah. Well, someone said it on a previous episode. Forgive me, I can't remember who, but it, this show is it's all motivation based. There isn't. It's not. None of them are black and white. None of them are good or evil. And that's why the show well, is so I, compelling. Well, I mean, you know. But anyways, I would say. That, that whole build up to Missa, because you know, you're almost like they really played with us. Like, you saw Cersei was starting to cry, and everything. Like, it was just down. like, she took her hand down. It was like a, okay, it was I, just way too I'm, much. I'm so sorry. I want to do a quick poll. Do we think Cersei's actually pregnant? No. Yes. I don't think so either. You don't think she is? No, absolutely not. No. No. I, I think from the prophecy, three. Three kids, gold their shrouds, gold their crowns. She had her chance. I think she told Jamie she was pregnant to manipulate him, and I think she slept with Pacey, Joshua Jackson, to get pregnant, but she can't. Yeah. She's too old. And I'm not old. I'm not well, she was drinking Jamie. wine in the first the episode. She was dr- Okay. She People was get no old ages in the Bible. That that's I mean we're, well, they we're lived ta- to like nine hundred well, years old. We are Fuck the talking Bible. fantasy. I don't think she's pregnant. Well, okay. yeah, if we're talking fantasy, maybe we should talk about the Bible. Um, <laughs> so what I think, though, is that, I mean, it's possible that she had lost the baby because she was drinking wine in that first episode. I don't think but, she was ever but, pregnant. But also think, like, then if she has a baby, you're on, like... She, it was Jamie's baby. I don't know. It, it, it could go either way. Well, I'm, I'm interested to see how this plays out. I love this discourse. 
I'm interested to see how it plays out. I don't think she's pregnant. I don't think she was ever pregnant. I think the prophecy was right. I also think Jamie said in the first season he's going to die in the arms of the woman he loves, which is really crazy because now that he's sleeping with Brienne, <gasps> I don't know if he's going to oh. die in Brienne's arms or I've thought this whole time there's no way Cersei and him are making it out of life. I think some one of them are going to die by the other one's hands. I think they're going to go well, together. Well, Jamie's going to kill her. Yeah. Which actually, um, we're gonna get to our predictions in a second. Okay. But um, never mind. Let's, let's go ahead. That. And, let's go ahead and go. Let's do our MVPs. I said my MVP was actually you, which is funny because we were just fighting, Lord Varys. <laughs> yeah, Lord Varys. Uh, I'm gonna say I love the conversation he had with Tyrion when he says I will. Act, he's talking about the realm, and he was like. I will act in their interest no matter the personal cost. That is a true hero. That is a true uh, person that we He always should, has been. Yes, and he always has been, and he's never yeah. and he's never backed out. That's exactly That's right. He tur he's turned on like every king because at some point they move away. And it's away. not turning really because he's always had the direct interest of the people in the mind, people. which is why... But which he turns is on the kings. He always turns on whatever king it is. He's just like, no, you're not doing exactly, it. Exactly, yes. Yeah. But uh, they're not worthy. You know what I mean? So, like... Lord Varys has always been about the people, for the people, yeah. by the people. That is why he is bald. And I want to say, I want to say, I don't know if I can do this eloquently, but I need to say it now. Dare you. Um, he is someone who has grown up without the uh, hindrance of... Sex. Like gender, yes. He doesn't have the he doesn't have the the hindrance of fragile masculinity or you know what I mean. Yeah, he's which not is really the only thing that's toxic. All right, go ahead, go ahead, because I'm nervous that okay. I just said that. <laughs> My no no no, you're totally right. I 100% agree with you. My MVP is the um, I guess you're calling them scorpions. So I'm not like a huge fan. Well, what did you? Write um, down? I wrote that they were dragon harpoons, otherwise known as dragon poons. <laughs> Um, I was just so shocked when that dragon got shot. Like, I was really not expecting that, and neither were these folks in the corner over here. So I put my MVP as Dragon Poon, because we were not expecting that dragon to go down. We were fully expecting Danny to enter into this final war with two dragons, and now she only has one, and that dragon already has an injured, what, wing or foot or whatever. Like, she's got one crippled dragon, and we believe in that dragon, but I just don't know how she's going to fully fight this war with a dragon versus no elephants. And yeah, <laughs> <laughs> who knows? <laughs> yeah. Angie Heroin, what, who is your MVP for tonight? Um, again, like always, I love following your response. Um, I would say my mine was Lord Varys. <laughs> yes! yes! That's yes! you, by the way. Come I know on. you don't know any of the characters, but... I fully know who I am tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I thought it was also really emotional because he also... Anything that plays to the ethos, I'm just like, hell yeah. And I just feel like when he was talking about the people, he was just like, he was getting very passionate. He's like, I, I don't care. And like, he's been friends with Tyrion since day one. And it's just kind of like, he's like, we may be parting ways here because like... I will do what I've done before. And I also like that he's just like, no, I think, <clears throat> what is it, Aegon Targaryen? Yep. Is that yeah. his name? Yeah. Aegon Targaryen is the one who should be ruling. Oh, yeah. 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 And he's just like, he's, you know, maybe if he, you know, he doesn't want to rule, maybe that's who should rule. But I think it's less. But he's also an idiot. So to me, it's less about like the actual lineage versus like who is actually going to care for the people. Right? And yeah. he feels like John, as yes, somebody who is like our full on George Washington in this situation, is like, I don't want to be the leader. So that is actually going to be the person who cares about the people. And that's what's so heartbreaking about this is because we've been set up from the beginning to be in support of Daenerys. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and Tyrion says that the whole time John doesn't want it, but it's like, who would be best, and that's why it's so tough because it's the that's not the answer we want, mm -hmm. but it might be the answer that we need. It's a full on mirror of Erised situation. If you look into it, the Sorcerer's Stone is in your pocket, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I love it. Okay, quickly, quickly, let's go through our predictions. Uh, before I watched this episode, I had this fanciful fantasy that the dragons were going to take over, and this was going to be a dragon situation. Mm. I'm back to my uh, episode one prediction. I think somehow Sansa's going to end up on the throne. I think Sansa is now the smartest and the most manipulative. Uh, Connor Cons, what do you think? 
Yeah, I was also in that similar situation. I think Sansa and somehow Tyrion is going to support her to get to that throne place. Um, but also, I would like would not be mad if Varys was like king and queen at the same time. Like, uh, so maybe I'll be the king. Oh my! I don't have God. a full, uh, like a fully thought out. I know prediction because I can you tell. understand. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, oh my goodness gracious! Um, okay, I will say that. Um, based on this episode, because, you know, before I was just like, well, it has to be Daenerys. I mean, like, come on, we've built up eight fucking years of this. It has to be yeah. Daenerys. But after this episode, um, there are two things that are pulling me in different directions. One, there... Um The fact that um, she's bringing all the people in the Red Keep, they're so close, they killed Masande. they're just, like, Daenerys is at a point where she's like, okay, well, she even said, she's like, I'm giving her the, you know, the power here, like, if you, you know, I want everybody to know that I came here, I did everything I needed to do, and then she said, like, well, they'll know. They'll then they'll know who to blame when I burn them. Ooh, yeah, that was that was so hot. I, I have a that. feeling that. Royal. So one idea is that I think she. I think they are going to destroy King's Landing, and there will not be a, um, a throne. Um, just like in her vision, when she walks to the throne, she sees it, but she never gets on it, and the it's all destroyed in the the Iron Throne Room. Yeah, and, and it's snowy too. And all of those predictions are they're loosely based. You know, they're not totally literal, but you know, they all happen. So that's a possibility. The other possibility um, is I'm not exactly sure what it would be, but Arya and the Hound are on their way down. Yes, we didn't, so, we didn't like, touch on that. Yeah. They have to do something. Cersei is on her. Get the fuck business. out of here, you dumb cunt. Oh so there's somebody in the window. That Anyways. Like they'd be so fine. I wish uh, they just come in here and join us. Hold on, hold on one second. But yeah, I think it's got to be something like that, because um, why else are Arya and Clegane going down? Right, but do you think they're both going to die? Because they're so they're both so resigned. I think the Hound will die. I you don't think Arya's going to die? Uh, it doesn't yeah, make sense. Yeah, because we still have Clegane Bowl. We still have the Hound versus the Mountain. Yeah. And I, this can't be the And the only the way that's going to happen is they have to infiltrate the Red Keep. So I don't think the Red Keep will be burned because of that. So there's yeah. two different things. I'm not sure. Yeah, this is insane. This is this is insane. We only have two episodes left. Insane you, in the membrane, all. I'm telling you. There's ya. only two episodes left. What she said. Uh, I, I want to thank you so much. I want to thank both of you so much for being here. Connor Cons, you're from my hometown. <laughs> we know each other peripherally through that. Uh, Auntie Heroin, you are an amazing artist, an thank amazing you. performer. And I, I can't thank you enough for being here And a tonight. big Game of Thrones fan. And a huge Game of Although Thrones fan. Although the books fan. seem to be turning out a lot better. Oh, oh, oh. yes. Uh, have you read the books? Um, I've done my fair share. I think the only thing that's going to that's gonna save me from after this is over is reading the books. I'm going to read the books after this is over. Uh, I read the first book. In my defense, I read the first book. Oh, yeah, me too. Um, <laughs> all right, so I want to thank Auntie Heroin. You can find Auntie Heroin's info below in the comments. Please you're, do, do yourself a favor. Go follow them. Please also go follow Connor Cons. Uh, follow me, Alexis Bevels. Uh, this has been OMG GOT Season 8, Episode 4. And uh, I'm, my quote for tonight is actually doesn't make any sense, uh, but it's my new goal in life. It's when Tormund tells John, what does he say? You weigh as much as two fleas fucking or something oh, like yeah. that. That's exactly it. Yeah. Pause. I want to get it right. Unpause. I said it right. Thank you so much for watching OMG GOT. And remember, you weigh as much as two fleas fucking. We'll see you next week. Bye.